Okay, I could talk to uh, the guy if I wanted to. Um, I could talk to the the boss man. I thought there might be more more like bottles I could grab. You know what? All right. We're having internet problems. I need to talk to Cox. We'll talk to the boss man. We'll talk to the union boss man. And then after that, we'll end the we'll end this episode. Because I don't know when when uh, I'll be able to get my some internet stuff back up working again. So until then, we might as well do the boss man speaking. Because this person's been hyped up so much. And it's like a major part of the game, it seems. So we're gonna do that. We are gonna talk to the boss man. Who was in here again? The file cabinet stands steady as I remember, Leah. All items. Oh, right. Drawers. It's actually really cool of them to not mess around with the, um, uh, with the time frames when you're just running. I'm, I'm never, uh, like, worried about running low on time because time doesn't go when I'm, uh, oh, what's this? Oh, gloves. Let's go past the nice singy, singy song man, and let's talk to the boss. And then once the boss is talked to, that'll be it. And we'll call it. He's fat. Or he's just big, I can't tell. Before you is a Oh my a god, that face! A walrus of a man. What is that face? What is that? This is the ugliest portrait I've ever seen. With great effort, <laughs> he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. A typical power play. Wait for him to speak first. Show him you've got a backbone. Have a good day, Mr. Dubois. I'm sure I'll be seeing you around. <laughs> he he spoke first, so truly I made the power play. Mr. Dubois, I hope time is on your side this time. Please, take a seat. I'm in a bit of a hurry right now. Have a good day, Mr. Dubois. I'm sure I'll be seeing you around. I'm sorry, okay. Mr. Dubois, <laughs> I hope time is on your side. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Please, all right. Take a seat. Why are you calling me Mr. Dubois? Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat, I insist. Why? He's trying to throw you off your game with this Dubois nonsense. Don't give him the pleasure. Yeah, I ain't sin. Very well, Mr. Dubois. I respect a man with strong convictions. No. As he nods, his multiple chins move like ocean waves. They, they are not at all holding back on the, on the, like, this man is fat statements. I, too, have convictions. One of which is that I will not engage with any man who won't face me at eye level. Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, I'd gladly resume our conversation. But until then, I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. Don't give up, but don't leave either. You're going to have this conversation on your terms. You just need to remain headstrong. Remain standing and don't go anywhere. Everard starts whistling a little worker song. He really is trying to ignore you. Or will you out of existence. The lieutenant stands right next to you, not showing any signs of impatience or boredom. Let's go. I see you are an extremely stubborn man, Mr. Dubois. That ain't necessarily a bad thing. Finally, the big man looks at you in the eye and speaks. You did it. 
This might help against whatever comes next. Let's go! So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? Oh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. As I'm not meeting him at eye level. This should take care of that nonsense. He points to a giant novelty check on his desk. It's absolutely comically huge. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Hey, that's 25 real. That's good money. Think of all the stuff you could. I, I don't like the idea of taking it. Taking it puts me in his pocket. If I take it, I'm, 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 I owe him. Yes, I know, Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. <sighs> I'd, rather be, I'd rather be poor than someone's lackey. You can keep it. Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts, then. Now, as ample midsection sinks further into the chair. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, union people are on it as we speak. How do you know I've that? I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. Why, why is he trying so hard to be my buddy? His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun, lost gun, lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. I'm not gonna let him have it. I would appreciate any help you could provide. Are you all right, Harry? You what? seem anxious. Don't be. Everything's going to be all right. I don't like this guy one fucking bit. I do not like him. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. At least you're not s Don't panic. God, you're sweating. Fuck! Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are gonna shoot themselves with it. So what? Men can cry too. You want to cry? God, you're weak. Whatever you do, don't cry. You'll think you're disgusting. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. What is this oh. Mr. Dubois he keeps repeating? What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. Mr. Dubois, Mr. Dubois. Harry! Mine go to your safe place. While Everard is distracted by your odd behavior, the lieutenant's eyes are mapping everything around you. The folder, desk, papers on the wall. We're good. We're good. Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hands somehow in a kind of throw-in motion, like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. I could really get a glass of that water. What an odd demonstration of, huh, you got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time, and I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. I... God, I... Oh my god, it's so hard to handle this fucking dude. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Thanks, Kim. You got my back. Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. 
It is about time to stop embarrassing yourself. Questions will help you regain some of your lost dignity. <sighs> Aren't you going to ask how I got in? Am I going to ask? Hell, Harry. You spin kicked my strongest man in the face. I saw it from my window. It's pretty cool. Would you ask a man like that how he got into your container yard? You don't have a window. It was a figure of speech, Harry. Of course I don't have a window. I'm in a container. <laughs> anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. You called me? I want to Mr. Dubois. Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard. I call you Harry. That's what the hanged corpse called you. Harry. So that's really my name? My god, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? Oh my god. I think the odds of that are very low. It's true, my memory's a bit hazy. I assure you, there's nothing to be ashamed of, Harry. You're among friends, and the good news is... <sighs> I have a big fat folder on you, Harry. I'm sure you have a lot of questions to ask. Maybe I can help you out. Don't trust him. For all you know, Dubois might be his name. You need to confirm this. No, his name is Everett Claire. Half-Light, stop trying to gaslight me. I'm sure you had some concerns you thought I might be able to address. And you were probably right. I can. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Asking too many questions will make you look weak. You should maybe focus on the folder. I, I would have very much liked the option to say, do not speak to my partner that way. What's my full name? Come on, give it to me. It's Harry. Harry Dubois. Well, now I know. Harry Dubois. You feel like a Dubois, but you don't feel like a... Harry, strange. Hmm. You don't feel like any of these things. You know what your name is. You have a sophisticated name, like that of a count or a beautiful man. Exactly. My name is Raphael Castell. Fine, Harry. You can even be Harry Raphael Dubois de Costo, or whatever you choose to be. <sighs> I'm sorry, Kim. Mr. Kitsuragi doesn't seem even slightly empathetic to your memory loss, Harry. I, however, wish to help you any way I can. Do not, do not, do not attempt this. <sighs> Where'd you get that folder? Ah, this? My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. You are? I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. I'm sure you understand. Please continue, Harry. Do you know where I live? But of course, Harry. Your precinct is the 41st and you live in Jamrock. You're a Jamrock boy. A long way from home, but that's okay. Shit. I live in Jamrock? I live in a shithole. Lovely. Of course, Harry, of course. Let's not linger on personal details and amnesia. You wanted something from me. I want to talk about the hanging. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to discuss it with you. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. <laughs> I sense there's a but. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. <sighs> yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. 
You guys are basically door opening machines. Incredibly talented at opening doors. <sighs> Is that true, Kim? Are we door opening machines? I'm not sure I understand. If you're asking us to break down someone's door, it's not going to happen. Ow, I'm not asking you to break down someone's door. I'm asking you to open the door. You're door opening machines, right? Come now. I just need you to go open a little door for me and leave it unlocked. A simple thing. Mm. Absolutely nothing shady about it. Mm. Does this jiggling ooze <laughs> think he's going to use you? He's got another thing coming. Play his game, son, with your eyes peeled. He's going to slip up, and when he does, you're going to come out on top. Whose door is it? Oh, no one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. Go unlock a door so that my union boys can murder this person. <sighs> a loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. Oh. Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. Oh, I hate how much power this man has. I hate how much power. And I'm not just talking about the, his gravitational field. Like, it's just, he, he has so much say over me because I'm a pathetic man. Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. Thank you, Kim. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. I can't accept so this. what will it be, Harry? I can't accept this for now. Of course, Harry, I understand. But if that's the case, I don't think we'll ever find your gun. Even worse, we won't be able to speak like equals about the murder. <sighs> Perhaps this was just bad timing for you. Know that you can always come back to me. I really hope you do. For your sake, my sake, and for your gun's sake too. Yes, we both understand what you meant. This may be the only way he thinks. I won't hold it against you. In fact, we probably should reconsider later. <sighs> Drug trade. What? Harry, how could you say that to me? You know I appreciate a joke as much as any Johnny Fat guy, but I can't take slander. Are you actually investigating this? I am. Lie. You've hurt me, Harry. Me, a friend. But you know what? And gets over it in two seconds. Seems like it didn't really hurt him. I trust you, like I trust all my friends. And I know you'll never talk to me about this again, because you don't want to wound me. So do what you want, and let's change the subject. Thank you for your understanding. We will continue to do what we must. You too, Lieutenant. You know, I like you, but you never were my favorite. I'm a Harry guy. I'm Team Harry. None taken. Did we have anything else to do here, Harry? I'm sorry. That this this wouldn't this this isn't this isn't accurate. Let me rephrase this. My dear Harry, there are literally millions of containers in this harbor. I couldn't possibly remember what's in all of them. Harry, you smooth-talking son of a bitch. Time is a precious resource, and I don't have enough of it to count containers with you. Smooth-talking? Maybe that's the way to go about opening <laughs> the container. Rhetoric. You should at least try convincing it. God damn it. I tried that already. <laughs> I made choice. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. I hope you're getting along. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone is just pals here. Yes, 
We're all trying to do what's best for Martin 8. Don't feel like you shouldn't work with her just because you and I are such good friends. I'm not a jealous guy. Whoa, that's so nice of him. Suspiciously nice. Why haven't you let her in to see you? If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. Nice guy. He doesn't want to see her. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Vanished? Harry, the woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here in time for the voting. Yeah? Oh, did I leave my casserole on? Better go home and check. The election can wait. When she got back, the whole thing was over. What do you mean, Harry? Nothing. I let him go. He's an old man, Harry. I wanted him to spend more time with his family. God knows how long he's got left. You call him a midget. Harry, I have little people in my organization. I would never call someone a midget. What is this? Oh my god. Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. I'm only kidding, Harry. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. It's hard to say if he really lost his temper or if this is another one of his tricks. This man almost never angers visibly. What was that, um, there was that, that part in, in Goodfellas, the, the, the movie Goodfellas, um, near the end when they're talking about when, when someone gets whacked in the mob and, and you never, you never like know when it's going to happen. And it's like, it's like it happens with a big smile. Like, like the Robert De Niro, whoever it was, like, big smile, like, talk about coffee, have a good time, you know, everything's normal, and then it's just like a gun in the back of the head. And, and that's every vibe I get from this guy, is just the, the big, fat fucking grin, and then the gun in, in, in the back of my head. I'm just a nice guy, Harry. I wouldn't be where I am now if I wasn't nice. Politics is all about emotions, and I want you to have positive emotions when you think of me. I do not. Okay, then. Positive emotions it is. You like positive emotions. Fuck you, electrochemistry. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. I have no interest in what she is doing. But I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business, and I respect your privacy. Just remember, none of this is secret. Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Everett doesn't mind. This is weird. Not nice weird, but okay. Let's hear it, Harry. I was hoping they were, uh, damn it, I was hoping. Of course, Harry, of course. <sighs> Let's not linger on personal detail. Yes, your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and effort. Mmm, my effort. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Could you really hold my gun hostage? Who knows? Only one thing is certain. <laughs> if you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. <sighs> yes. Thank you for the hot tip regarding your lost gun, Harry. My men have indeed factored in that you pawned it. Now, please, let the professionals do their job. Kick back, Harry, relax. I have great guys on this. You focus on what's important, building our relationship for the good of Martin Ains. It did not come as a surprise to him. He might actually not be bullshitting.
Damn it, Harry. That's exactly what it means. I'm only kidding, of course. He is not. Thanks, halfway. Of course. I understand. We help you, you help us. Could you help get my dead body down from a tree? You might have noticed there's one hanging on a tree behind the hostel cafeteria. Oh my. Don't take this question personally, but why would I get involved in this matter? Oh. Mr. Clare, the man was hanged with a cargo belt. A steel reinforced cargo belt. It's safe to assume the Union had something to do with the murder. Besides, getting the body down would benefit all of us. It's a stain on the neighborhood. Say nothing. I can certainly see how having him up there might start affecting some real estate values. He licks his fat lips and smiles. But of course, all joking aside, I am going to help you. Picks up the handset of the radio phone to his right, then clicks a button. Jean-Luc, the cop who bested you in physical combat is here, and he has a little dead body in a tree problem. Namely, he needs it to be taken down. Please extend him this courtesy. Jean-Luc. You can find Luke down at the gates, but you already knew that. Anyway, he's going to help you. Now that he's back on his feet. Jean-Luc is, is Measurehead's like real name, I'm assuming. <laughs> What the hell? I'm going to leave now. We might talk later. Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. I already had one of those. Here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. Oh, yeah. I, I already stole that from him, I think. Oh my god, that is the worst that is the worst person I have ever like, holy shit. I, I did I knew he would be bad, but oh my god. Oh my money! He has me so in his pocket. I don't know what I can do. He he wants me to get someone killed. He wants me to help him murder someone. Like, genuinely. I... I can't... Ooh, the type... The type B racial... Go get the fucking body down. Do not presume this has drastically altered our race dynamic. I knocked you out like a god of martial arts. True. I said nothing about our personal dynamic. That has altered a little. He means very little. Get the body down. So it was. You bested me in race combat to reach race my combat. Superior, then had him give me an order. I salute your cunning, enemy. I will go and remove the body from the tree with my bare hands. You're so noble, Measurehead. Eat shit. But while I am gone, someone must stand guard on the bridge. That someone needs to be you. Both of you. That would mean you're openly showing the people that you're taking the Union's side. Lieutenant, what if we don't want to do that? This is the uncomfortable result of not taking it down ourselves. I can live with a compromise. Listen to your little friend. He is wise in his childlike way. His mysterious race may yet prove fierce competition to my heroic Hapluku. Okay, so here's the thing. I don't necessarily mind being shown that I'm on the union side. Like, I don't, I don't if, if Kim's okay with it, then I'm okay with it. 
Um, I don't trust Measure Head to not do something with the body, though. I don't. Ex I don't believe the body should just be down. I have. I, I feel like it's gonna like go missing, or like the or like the fucking boots will be gone, and I need my armor. <sighs> I'm gonna take a risk. I'm gonna let him do it. Hey, see that they stay here the whole time. I'm gonna do it. I'm not happy about it. I'm gonna do it. That may just phase through the railing. <laughs> the woman's gaze follows Measure Head as he leaves. So you guys are like cops or something? We're just trying to keep things from going to shit. Have you ever thought that maybe things should go to shit? I'm Katya, by the way. Oh my god, I'm Trixie. You hear that? That sound. He's breaking something. Yeah, Jean-Luc must be really tearing it up over there. I wish I could see it. I don't. Look at you! RCM renter cops! Guarding that bridge like Evrod's lapdogs! Is this where it's at now? The RCM is for sale! <sighs> and who are you? What is your business here? Why are your clothes four sizes too small for you? <laughs> That's none of your business. A shrill laughter interrupts you, echoing across Martinez. It's Kuno. Oh. Then, the man turns to look behind him at the behemoth appearing around the corner, approaching him, walking past him. You know, I, I never really noticed it as much when he was standing here, but I never, I, I don't think I internalized actually corpse, uh, how big Measure Head is. This dude tree. is like seven feet tall. Stand down and congratulate yourself. You have sided with Ray's victory today. Ugh. And what you had to do was to become a union man for all to see. I'll ask this question about the Hardy Boys just in case, in case it gives me XP. I am not the first line of defense. I am the last. In addition, these so-called Hardy Boys are an effeminate clique of bodybuilders. Their company is spiritually degrading. The Hardy Manlets are on the pay of the company. Manlet. I answer to the Union alone. And I do this out of race heroism. No. Finance is an alien concept to the Simmons. Now leave me be. I must luxuriate in the company of my woman. My woman. Rigorous self-critique. Here it is. Hard facts from the man you are. You once jerked off in the locker room and were caught. <laughs> you held a young woman by the arm and kept her in your apartment for 20 minutes against her will oh god that's right these are not flights of fancy these are real deeds harry emerging from the darkness of your past you tried shooting a fleeing suspect in the foot but hit him in the pelvis crippling him for life oh and my god above all you let life defeat you all the gifts your parents gave you all the love and patience of your friends you drowned in a neurotoxin you let misery win, and it will keep on winning till you die, or overcome it. Wow. Um... You, so you know, there's there's a, a part in um in in Prey, the 2017 one, where you have to uh, uh, determine whether you want to let a death row inmate live 
to get an armory uh, locker room thing. Um, and you can choose to do that or to kill him, basically. Uh, but you can look at his file before you make the choice. Because initially, everything's gone to shit. It feels pretty immoral to just kill him for, like, I think more Nero mod stuff. Um, but then you look at his file, and it's, like, child sex trafficking. It's, 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 like, really high-level crimes. I remember reading that and being kind of impressed by that decision. Because you could just say, like, murderer or something. And in a weird way, a lot of us have grown cold to that statement. Like, murderer. It doesn't carry the same weight, you know? It's like, it's like, if you are a, a murderer, that that is, in, in, at least in my opinion, like, like morally a worse thing than being something like, say, a which is also fucking terrible. But that word, that that's like, being something like a feels so much fucking worse, so much more disgusting than than a murderer, which is like, in my opinion, like a, a category above. These options they they chose for his backstory are incredibly, incredibly like they're specific in a really painful way. Like jerked off in a locker room and were caught. That's something you remember for your entire life, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Like, it's embarrassing, it's awful, but you're like a child, like, you do stupid shit, whatever. It, it's awful, but it's not, like, the worst thing in the world. Kept a young woman by the arm in your apartment for 20 minutes against her will is very bad. That is really nasty, because that's kind of one, that's one of those things where you're, uh, you're, uh, utilizing physical force against someone, which is just... Like very creepy, uh, and, and very and very nasty, and, and to the point of like abusive and and really just bad. Crippling a man for life, shooting a suspect in the foot, kind of thing. Oh boy, man. The the choices they've made here are really painful, and. Quite devastating, I won't lie. <sighs> Intelligence and Psy Red Checks heal one morale. Physical and mo motor checks heal one health. Learning cap for pain threshold raised to six. That's, I mean, that's actually a very fucking good bonus, holy shit. That's just extremely good. Wow. Um, that is a, a very good fucking option. Holy shit. I have a whole bunch of people I need to talk to now. Whole bunch of people. Oh yeah, I, had, I have a bag of bottles. I could probably turn it in. The tear machine stands in the corner. Your bottles clunk into the machine and the money- Yay, money! All right, I was going to end the episode, but I'm going to check the body. The corpse lies on the ground among the remains of an absolutely demolished pinewood branch. It's gently laid on one side. <laughs> Beautiful. Wipe a tear from your eye. Mr. Measure had has done a good job. Nothing is too broken or compromised. The victim is ready for a field autopsy. Yes. One, investigation of the scene. Two, initial examination of the victim. Three, field autopsy. Four, transportation of the body to the morgue. We are on number three. That we are. The fuck are they on about? Shut up, Kuno. Cop's gonna cut his shit up. No, you and I are detectives. The honorary rank of detective signifies our ability to handle the entire incident chain. From autopsy to clean up, to social work, everything. Oh. Nice car. Oh no. An honor and a burden, 
attached to your rank once you've proven yourself able. Oh no. Usually after five to eight years of field work. Mine is Lieutenant Detective. You are. Your station would not have assigned you on this case if you weren't. Well. Now. The Lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Tell me something, dead man. Shoot, Looney Rooney. Oh, uh, all right. Come back later, Corpo. Amuse yourself. I thought we decided to leave it to processing. Let's not turn this into some kind of circus. I thought we decided to leave it to processing. Oh, damn it. Let's not... Come on, officer. You know what a field autopsy is. You've done a hundred of them. <laughs> Do you have another pair of gloves? Unfortunately, no. I have garden gloves. They are better than nothing. Tell you what, I perform the anatomical side of things while you will take notes. Okay, where should I take these notes? In your paperwork, officer. Just fill out the field autopsy form. <sighs> he sighs, already expecting the answer. You're not going to believe this, Kim. Officer, what haven't you lost? <laughs> I, have, I have both my shoes. Good. Otherwise, you would only have one shoe now. <laughs> I can give you my paperwork. There's an autopsy form there. Several, actually. But only if it helps move things along. Let's work off yours for now, Kim. Right. The autopsy form is near the end. I will not peek at his notes. I respect his privacy. The dead man stares in silence as you crack open I mean, it's not really, letter. it's his notes, so The whatever. bright red paper is whatever. covered in boxes and lists describing the condition of his skin and organs in three parts. Above those, an 11 field info form needs filling out first. It begins with... Begin, assistant. That's you. I'll put in my normal Harry Dubois. The corpse is indifferent to your scribblings. Just lies there. The next box says... Coroner's case number... KK57-0803. Dot O eight one five. Next. Name. N.A. Next. Date of birth. N.A. Age. Hmm. Roughly 50. Okay. The corpse looks ageless, like meat on a hook. Teeming with opportunistic microorganisms, letting out a foul-smelling diamine compound. Your eyes turn watery. Race. Mondial. Mondial. Type B. The pudgy mess of curdled meat looks neither mondial nor anything other. Sex male. Fucky, fucky! Male. <laughs> Pigs could have sex! I'm not gonna write fucky, fucky, goddamn. Nor does he look male with his pregnant belly <laughs> and indistinguishable face. Date of death. We're still going with March 4th, 51. Okay. March 4th, 04, 03, Europe! <laughs> what else? Nine. Body identified by is non applicable. Ten. Case number is the same as the coroner's case. All right. KK 57 0503 0815 listens motionless with the cargo belt still around his neck. Only one box remains. Evidence of treatment? None, at least not after the initial examination. A strange word, treatment. Well, exa yeah, what well, exactly is treatment anyway? Interfering with the body's position or wounds post-mortem. What about the kids? Or is that just for us? How did you not know that? Aren't you a cop? You're leaving a weak impression here. Say something sure-handed. Volition's gonna tell me otherwise. Don't overdo it. It's okay to be unsure. I fucking knew it. <laughs> Agreed, no treatment. A silent nod. The lieutenant places his gloved hand on the corpse's chest, as if in preparation. Your central mm -hmm. nervous system recognizes this gesture. It's the stations of the breath. Ecclesiastic, religious in nature, a holdout from pre-Delorean burial rites. It takes him two seconds to perform. Then, somewhere in Jamrock North, a small wood shed 
behind Rosencrantz Row, Lieutenant Nick Feuerbach puts his hand to the chest of a small corpse, no larger than a monkey. It's raining outside, light drizzle. There is darkness in the shed. Elsewhere yet, an obese female sits in a wicker chair, her silhouette ball-like against the window. Outside, Grand Coudon. The day is turning dim for Sergeant. Grand Coudon, that's the suburbs. Hand extended, he approaches to make sure she is dead more than anything else. The building is tall, seven stories wind-wrapped in solitude. Most of the apartments are unoccupied. This was a suicide, the other an accident, the small one. So, oh, dead kids, not good. And so, all across Jamrock, Coal City, G-R-I-H, 42 deceased persons found today. Holy shit. 42 stations of breath. Well, 42 deaths in like most of Revishal, that's not terrible. We should start the post I, I don't know how many people are here. Doesn't sound great still. The corpse cannot feel Kim's hand on his chest. It no longer meaningfully interacts with its surroundings. A thicket of boxes and lists on red copy of paper tries to answer why. External examination summary. Clothes. The deceased wears armored boots and white briefs. The make of the briefs is Babrodin, I think. Let's see. Oh, see, it's happening. Oh my God. Babrodin, yes. Inexpensive. Size M. Color white. The disappointment is palpable. The red-haired thing was expecting something more lurid. The red-haired thing. Thing. The rest of the clothes have been removed post-mortem by scavengers in order to get to the victim's ceramic armor. Officers are in search of the missing pieces. Removal of the boots is left for processing. Tattoos. The upper torso is covered in a single continuous tattoo resembling a map of the night sky. It reaches from the right shoulder to the heart. The ink is blue and white. The assistant has a color photograph of the markings to be added to the case files as document A1. The photo is taken on the scene using a triggered mini. The deceased has a cargo lashing belt around his neck tied with a hangman's knot. Color yellow, length three meters. There is a buckle on the other hand, well nourished. Athletically built, measuring 1.8 meters, generally consistent with age, about 50. Preservation is good. Ambient temperature, below freezing. Mm -hmm. Body hair is light brown. Distribution is consistent with age. The deceased had male pattern baldness. Hair is combed back, short. Touch the corpse's hair before moving on. His hair feels wet, soaked with rain, cold to touch. Not that different from a living person after a swim. I don't know why I want to stroke his hair, but I'm going to do it. The stench is suffocating. Strands of dark brown hair start sticking to your hand, like thread off a rag doll's head. I'm not going to keep petting him. Lividity is consistent. I don't, I don't want to pet the man. The head is congested. <laughs> why is it keep petting him? Oh, God. Head, chest and thighs. Consistent with stone thrown post-mortem. Low velocity. Fucking low velocity. You think Kuno doesn't know what you're talking about? Velocity was fucking max. <laughs> talking shit about Kuno's velocity. In addition, there are bite marks on the face, scalp, and chest, consistent with predation. <laughs> I will not amend for high velocity. You get your mark. It's a small folding knife while the other hand pulling on the belt, he starts cutting into the polyester. The stench is horrid. After a while, it's obvious the material cannot be cut. The steel wiring. Ah, there's too much of it. We need to remove the belt so we can get to the ligature mark. You got just the right tool for that. Oh yeah, the I'm. Chain cutters. Oh yeah, I'm prepared to pet the chain cutters. The hanged man lets out a joyous little bubble of rot from his nose. Okay. Always good to think ahead. Now. We need to cut the belt to see the ligature mark below, carefully, with as much precision as you can. Oh no. See, my pig is gonna fuck his head off. No he ain't. Your pig's a boring fuck. He jammed the cutters right under the knot. 
That seems like a smart idea. Yeah, somewhere. Of there, course I fail it. Already. Of course I fail it. In the man's flesh. Then you rotate them to get a better hold. Then. Oh shit. Fuckity fuck. The lieutenant looks by, somewhat worried as you summon power words to your aid. Oh, if I rotate more, I'm just gonna rip through the flesh even more. Cut some. Yeah, fuck him. Fuck that faggoty. Corpse fucking time. Told you my pig was hardcore. I should have a go first. I think I have a strategy. Yeah, 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 yeah. He sinks the cutters into the knot. Go ahead. Preparing to perform the cuts with his elbow to his knee for precision. God damn it. Yes, that's much better form than you had. Yeah. Snap. The knot is slashed. Another cut and the belt falls apart like a flower bouquet, revealing the dead man's neck and the dark red ligature mark around it. Here. Neil's close to the body and running his fingers in a dark red groove until he comes to the a gap. The rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the ligature mark. The suspension point is in the back of the neck, on the nape. As it ought to. This is where its grip on the curdled meat is gentlest, pulling up. Hemorrhaging is observed on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. The mark is well pronounced, consistent with a drop from 1 or 1.5 meters. Chest is intact. Normal contour, abdomen is protuberant, pelvis intact, genitalia. Oh, Kuno's gonna say something. No, <laughs> let's get off and see. I fucking knew it. This is clearly what they've been waiting for ever since the autopsy began. The lieutenant is trying to make it as boring as possible. Genitalia is male and unremarkable. No evidence of injury. Ah, yes, your hunch before. We can have a semen analysis requested from processing, if that's what you meant. Mm -hmm. Just write down that we request an analysis. The corpse with his pants down does not have an opinion on the subject. All the dead man's penis is average size, <laughs> congested from the downward collection of blood. Oh. The testicles are uneven in length, hanging underneath. The genitalia is greenish. Marbling is present around the crotch. Wow, they really, they really decided to go with a realistic body. Holy shit. You should touch it. <laughs> no, 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 no electrochemistry. No. Back is symmetrical. No. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There are combat injuries on the right hand, thigh, and hip. Right hand, thigh, and hip. Bullets have bitten little pieces out of him. Bullets? It must have been excruciating, especially the hip. Before you is a temple of pain, that new little tenderness in life. In addition, I see smaller, residual scars, too numerous to count, covering about 30% of his skin. Ah, it sounds like a soul. Yeah, okay, I can see that. Mm -hmm. We have a real museum here. Of battles, wars, last item, hands. His flesh is cold, icy. Pleased to meet you. Where are you from and what's your name? My name is... I'm only fucking with you. Oh. I know where you're from. From Cappadocia. And your name... Is Il Corbo. What can I do you for, Il Corbo de Cappadocia? You get me, Corbo. A temple of pain? I feel like you were once for tenderness and kisses yourself, but then shit went south, and now you're ahead of even me on the pain front. We should do this more often. <laughs> Be close like this, I mean. No. Oh. Hands are clean. No sign of injury from struggling. I was. Maybe I'm just not seeing them. Honestly, this stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. I've only had, um, been, been seen a couple dead bodies before in my time. Um, uh, and only one smelt bad. Um, but it was not because it was like rotting like this one. It was because they had puked up a shitload of blood. Uh, like, like a shitload of blood. And then um, uh, like face planted into it. 
Uh, I never got up from that, so it kind of pooled. And it, it was pretty rancid. I can't imagine what this smells like right here. Like, I can't imagine what in goddamn hell this must smell like. Ooh. That's all for the external. <laughs> well done. The muffled. <laughs> Internal examination. Central nervous system. I have nothing. Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? We don't even have a joke. Thanks, conceptualization. Miscoskeletal. Purge fluid is coming from the mouth. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Higher bone. Let's see. God, I, I have like no blue checks ever. With his eyes almost closed, the lieutenant puts his hand on the dead man's throat and begins to massage it gently. A rotting smell erupts from the mouth. Purge fluid runs down his lips, black and viscous. Yeah, jack that fucker off! The hyoid bone is fractured. The rest of the musculoskeletal system is intact. Unremarkable. Well, it's probably fractured because of the fucking rope. Respiratory system. Oral cavity shows no lesions. The victim has received a dental implant, possibly after a combat wound. Mouth swollen, hemorrhaging present in mucose of the lips and mouth. From here, it looks as though the clown-faced man is screaming. The tendons of his jaw are torn apart. Hyoid, ripped from the force of the lieutenant's hands. Yeah, because you gotta really, like, pry that shit open. No scream. No sigh of relief rises from the darkness inside. It's humid there. Sickly sweet air, unlike anything living. You feel like you're about to throw up again, straight in that mouth of his. No, you don't. You can keep it in. You can keep anything in. You manage to suppress the contractions trying to enter your stomach. All it takes is concentration. Through it, you see nothing but darkness. More meat and darkness. There are ancient mysteries down there, Kobo. Ask me later. Hemorrhaging present in mucus. Let's go to the jobs. The mouth snaps shut before you. Hepatobiliary. N.A. Why don't we have anything? Uh, are you a hepatobiliary expert? He looks at the corpse's stomach with a mixture of tiredness and disgust. I don't think so. Neither am I. And that's it? That's it. Okay. Same for toxicology and serology. Both? Anything. Unless you have untapped reservoirs of knowledge there. The completionist in me wonders if there's something we could still do. We already have one test as per regulation, and we already requested semen. Oh, shit. Pigs requested semen like it's no big deal? Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like the voice actor for the kid, like, <laughs> just, like, barely kept that one. I'm not even interested in these boring mulkers anymore. I haven't sucked him off for anything. Can we change it to toxicology? At a request, then. We'll know if drugs or poisons remain in his blood. At this stage, I doubt processing will find anything, even if he was brimming with it. Cardiovascular. The body exhibits lividity in the lower extremities, feet, hands, and neck. Yeah. Visually consistent with the hanging. Yeah, blood pools to the bottom. Gastrointestinal. Oh. Digested semi-solid food in stomach. Voila. <laughs> Write it down, keep the voila. What's next on the list? Description of injuries. Let's see. We have bite marks, contusions on the head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling the neck. You'll need three fields. Leave a fourth one too. But the injuries we inflicted. Oh. So we inflicted them? <laughs> okay, I have inflicted. Okay, so there's an incision on the thorax from a chain cutter. I wouldn't mention it. Better not to muddy the waters. All right, yeah, 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 let's not. See? These pigs are fucking corrupt. Why don't you fuck him if you love him so much? Now, injuries. Okay, let's do the contusions. So, the scalp bleeds from a post-mortem head injury. Post-mortem. Oh. The injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. A perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post-mortem. At maximum velocity, fucko! 
Goddamn it. Has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity. <laughs> Coagulated blood sticks to his scalp and chest, where the countless stones have hit the dead man. Beneath the description of injury. Yeah. Two non, boxes. Yeah. Non fatal post mortem. Right. Next. Bite marks? Like what? Crows? Head, chest, and scalp bite mark injuries. Predation by birds has caused damage yeah. to the body. Odontologist does not need to be consulted. And your opinion, officer? Oh, come on. We'd... Agreed. Next injury. What's the fourth injury field for? Nothing. Just in case. Okay. A dark red abraded ligature mark encircling the neck with a gap on the nape measuring, let's say, seven centimeters. The hyoid bone is fractured. The cervical column intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, one centimeter. No signs of clawing on the neck. No signs of clawing on the neck. His hands weren't tied. You would think he'd... Perhaps he was knocked out first and dragged. Normally you'd be, you'd wake up when with life threat. Hmm. Below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's head jerks to the side. The ring around his neck is visible. You know, you... His hands weren't tied. He doesn't have like lacerations around the, the wrist for... The only possibility would be if he was knocked out. <laughs> the amount of times I've asked if he's been enjoying himself. Man, could you imagine if he actually just killed himself by auto erotic asphyxiation? He happened to be a union worker. That's why he had the fucking access to the belt and he was like, sick ass. And he fucked up and <laughs> no, because even if he was jerking himself off up there, he would still realize things are going wrong and then he would go to fucking fix himself now. Fatal injury. That's it. We have established cause of death. It's not much and it leaves much to be questioned, but it's a start. Let's wrap this up. I pronounce this field autopsy over. How'd it go? Well, we established probable cause of death. Some would say that's the goal of an autopsy. We requested a test to be run on the genitals. That was the règle. The results should arrive in a couple of weeks if we are lucky. I would not hold my breath. Couple of weeks? Oh, well, fuck. We were thorough with the list of injuries, too. We described them all in detail. What is there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. Oh, yeah. Well done, Master Detective. Maybe a drink is in order? Stop trying to kill me, electrochemistry. Now? Now we put him in a body bag and I drive him to Forborg for processing. The lieutenant looks at the dead man one more time, then at his notebook, then at the corpse again. He's thinking, did I miss something? Wow. We did miss something, though. I, I, the, no, but the, but the, uh, the, the, the lack of scratches around the neck. But I'm too stupid. Roll it. You run your hands over the victim's cold body, his limbs, his torso with its swollen organs. Maybe you should be more. Thorough. Look under his fingernails like Kim did. His fingernails have turned dark. They're chipped and quite long. There is dirt under them. There's dirt That's to all. stop. There are dirt. Do you think we missed something? Yes. You can't shake the feeling that there are more secrets concealed in the flesh before you. Yes. Okay, well, we are in leave of Mortis here. He is disintegrating. Oh. We need to refrigerate the body if we want to conduct another examination. And we need to do it fast. Refrigerator! 
The ice bear! Hey, wasn't there a giant ice bear sarcophagus below that building? Yes! Why, yes, there was. Why? Was massive. Red eyes glowing in the dark. Why, yes, there was. Now, detective, I've rarely been disappointed by the size of a giant ice bear fridge. But I think we should still take a look at it first. Make sure it's big enough before we carry him over. Let's move. With every hour, whatever we are looking for in the deceased will become harder to find.